<laughs> uh, we have a very special guest with us here today, uh, Mate Duran from Gringo Visas. Uh, we wanted to speak to her today. Gringo Visas happens to be the facilitator that we use to relocate here to Ecuador. So uh, without further ado, Mate, you can take it away. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you so much for uh, choosing Gringo Visas for your visa. Um, I am happy to answer any questions by email. And also I am available by phone. But I would like to talk um, about the different visa options that we have here in Ecuador. And um, I always like to begin with a professional visa because it is still one of the best visas we have here in Ecuador for uh, people that are looking to relocate and uh, are not necessarily retire or are not looking to invest money. For that reason, the professional visa is one of the best. You do need to have a four-year university degree, which we can register, and that can be the visa support. The good thing is now, um, with the new law that came out in 2022, all of the visas have the same benefits and the same guidelines. So it doesn't matter if you have, let's say, a pension visa or a investment visa or um, a professional visa. All of those visas have the same benefits and the same guidelines. With all of them, you can uh, legally work in Ecuador. You don't have to work if you don't want to, but of course you can work in Ecuador and um, you can get a cedula, which is the Ecuadorian ID that we all have here in Ecuador. Also, um, you can sign up for government insurance, but again, the good thing about the professional visa is that once your degree is registered, it remains registered to your name and it doesn't expire. We have people that are looking to retire in the next two, three years, and they want to have the degree registered ahead of time. That way they have the visa support ready for any time they want to relocate. It is a little bit of um, additional paperwork at the beginning um, because you do need uh, four university documents. One of them is the diploma. The second one is the school transcripts and two letters from the university, which of course we will give you samples for the letters to make it easy. That way your school only has to um, sign, sign the letters, get them certified and put them in the mail. And um, the, the, the process to do the degree registration usually takes two, uh, three months uh, but again, after it's registered, it never expires. And you can use that for when you relocate. And when you are ready to relocate, you need to get, of course, an FBI background check, if that applies, a state police report, um, and a marriage license if you marry, or children's birth certificate if you are adding children dependents. Now, um, we can talk about the pension visa. And the pension visa, sorry. The pension visa is basically <laughs> when you receive a pension through Social Security, which is has to be at least $1,350 per month. This pension can be from Social Security. It can be from a retired private uh, pension or BA when you are retired from the military or um, income from, let's say, like a 401k investment as long as you receive a minimum of $1,350 per month. And uh, to add dependents, you do need to show an additional $250. The good thing is that the additional $250 can come from any source. It can be income from your spouse. It can be income from a property you are renting it out, or it doesn't necessarily have to be from the same main pension or the same investment 401k um, or from the retired military. Now, um, that's basically the pension visa. Um, I get this question a lot and there's not an age minimum or age limit. We have a lot of young people that retire very early and as long as they are receiving this income. And um, this visa is almost similar to, to the um, Pensioner's visa, which is basically when you receive some kind of income from a rental property or um, an investment. 
basically they're all required those two visas require you to have at least one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for um in income now um we also have the investment visa the investment visa is by depositing in ecuador forty five thousand dollars in a cd to your name and um ecuador has a very good interest rate they pay up to right now they're paying up to nine percent so the investment um, paying 9% here in Ecuador is pretty good. The government insures up to 32,000, but some banks, they have their own insurance. And so um, it's pretty much safe to say that you can invest up to 45,000. The good thing is that to add additional dependents, you don't need an additional investment. With 45,000, you can claim your spouse, your children, um, even if they're over um, the age of um, 18. Now, um, there's other visas that we have here in Ecuador that get you a visa, which is a work visa, um, volunteer visa. But basically, again, all of those visas have the same benefits and the same guidelines. The work visa, you if you get hired by a company in Ecuador, you have to pretty much uh, remain working for the company or continue on to have an agreement with the company for two years in order to apply for a permanent. Um, well, it's almost um, similar, the digital nomad visa to the pension visa because the income is the same, 1350 but the digital nomad visa is when you work for a company overseas online and at that point, we do have to prove that you are uh, working for this company by showing a, a work agreement. They might ask you also to show you taxes for at least the last year. And uh, if you own a company also, you need to prove that you're making at least 1350 per month and uh, prove that the company is real, which is usually by showing a license. In the states, in um, the different states usually issue a business license equal to um, an LLC or a corporation. Um, and then the income here, which is 1,350 now, is basically based on the Ecuadorian minimum wage, which is $450 times three. And um, it does make a difference when you wanna do the professional because you only have to show $450. Same thing for the investment visa, you only have to show that you have some kind of income coming in for $450, and this is um, proven usually by showing your bank statements. It depends, three months, six months of bank statements. It does go uh, on a case by case sometimes, but the source of funds don't need to be verified. You just need to show that the money is coming into your account. Um, let's see, also, this visa, this, these different visas that we talk now, they will be, um, Temporary visas for two years. The travel restrictions will be up to 90 days during the first 21 months. Why 21 months? Because right at the end of 21 months, you can present your case to apply for a permanent residency visa. Now the permanent residency visa, you can only qualify if in fact you didn't leave the country for more than 90 days during those first 21 months. If you leave the country for more than 90 days during the first 21 months, then uh, you will not be able to qualify for a permanent. You will have to keep, if you wish to continue in Ecuador, you can apply for another temporary visa, which it will give you another two years. There's no um, limit of times that you can get temporary visas. Um, of course, it's better or best if you plan on living in Ecuador is to try not to leave the country for more than 90 days, during those first 21 months, so then you can apply for a permanent visa. The permanent visa on year number three and year number four have uh, restrictions for traveling, but it is 180 days each year, which means 180 mm -hmm. days on year number three and 180 days on year number two. And in year number five, you have pretty much no travel restrictions as long as you come into Ecuador one time every uh, every two years. It, was, it used to be five years, now it's every two years. Even for one day in and out, you don't lose your visa, your residency visa. 
And um, the permanent residency visa basically is the same as the temporary as far as the benefits that you have. You can work if you want to. You can open up a business. Um, you have every benefit as an Ecuadorian citizen. The only thing that you will not be able to get is an Ecuadorian passport because you're not a citizen, but everything else you're entitled to. That's uh, probably the reason that not many people necessarily apply for citizenship. And um, of course, you know, what it is recommended that you do is once you do have your temporary visa is that you do uh, what's called a marriage registration. If you marry that way, when it comes time to do the visa renewal, you won't need to get a new apostille marriage license at that time. If you register your marriage here in Ecuador with the civil registration office, you will have a marriage license um, at your fingertips, so you can just download it. I think it's five dollars that you pay online, and they give you a marriage license, which is usually needed to prove that that you marry in order to renew the visa, in order to have access to uh, bank accounts for your spouse um, in case that it's needed. Um, let's see. The other thing that we can talk about also is maybe um, driver's licenses. In, in Ecuador, um, to get a driver's license, you can bring your driving record from the U.S., Apastillo or Canada, as long as it is in the U.S., Apastillo or in Canada legalized through the Ecuadorian embassy. And um, you can take in a small test here that it is in Spanish. We do uh, provide you with the link and with the questions in English and Spanish so you can get prepared. But as soon as you become a resident, if you're going to be driving, it is required that you have an Ecuadorian driver's license because at that time you qualify for a driver's license. And um, with the unexpired driver's license from your home country, you can, and, you, and also having the driving record up as still, you can um, get the Ecuadorian driver's license without having to go to school. The only thing again is to pass this test and we will assist you with the entire process. Um, let's see also, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Gringo Visas. We've been in business for over 12 years. We have our main office here in Cuenca, Ecuador. We also have an office in Manta. Uh, Manta started doing a cedula process and more things for expats um, recently. So we are there in Manta and we do. I do have somebody that works there for us, but we will go around Ecuador. We have somebody that helps um, helps us with the paperwork and we'll meet with you once we set up an appointment in Quito, in Coracachi, Loja, different cities in Ecuador. We have clients also living in, um, in the Amazon, and we find people that are nearby, Coracachi also. And uh, through the office in Connecticut, we offer the Alpastillos for the 50 states. We have a person that works there for us. She's a notary, and she uh, works there full time. Um, doing the apastillos, and we use our Connecticut office for anything that's needed as far as receiving paperwork there, forwarding it to Ecuador. Same thing when we need something from the U.S., we forward it from Cuenca to Connecticut. And um, also we offer uh, legalization services for documents from Canada. Uh, we do it here in Quito through an Ecuadorian through an Ecuadorian uh, consulate uh, for Canada here in Quito again. We offer that service because um, it seemed that it was taking a little bit more longer over there, but you can totally do it also there. We give you all of the instructions. Um, same thing if you want to apostle your own documents in Connecticut, we provide you with the forms and the instructions. That way you will know exactly what needs to be done, when and where. Mm -hmm.